Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around Missoula. It is Friday, the November 22nd, and I'm here to say that it's going to be cold pretty much all weekend. A. Eh? Anyways, Friday. Um, you know, it's it's pretty cool this morning. You know, uh, you know, like most mornings, uh, a little frost on the window, so you might want to break out the uh, the scraper. Um, your high is going to be 42. Your low is going to be 23. Um, this weekend, uh, travel might be a little uh, tricky because there is that chance of snow happening through Sunday to Monday. Um, if you guys are planning on going out this weekend to go on a trip over to see your family during the Thanksgiving time as well, I I will be off for Thanksgiving because hey, it's Thanksgiving. Why? what I want to be here. <laughs> so, um, just so you know, I am kind of getting over a cold and whatnot, so I will hopefully get over it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some news items. One of the biggest things that are happening more locally is that a an author, um, uh, local author, memoirist, um, memoirist, or whatever you like to call it, is got a, Nef- a Netflix deal. Um, and of course, I had a chance to film this author, Stephanie Land, during the Montana Book Festival out of Missoula. It w- and the Netflix series will follow a maid who learned about hidden wealth and learned about people without having to be seen or heard. A lot of the biggest things about the maid service that she worked for is that she had to go to uh, people's houses, clean their houses. She, um, her uh, old car leaked on their driveway, which caused her to get fired from one of her maid service jobs because for a lot of these ser- uh, maid services, they want you to clean the house and leave no trace. Um, so the memoir uh, picked up by Netflix and will be produced by actor uh, Margot Robbie, known for I, Tanya and the upcoming Harley Quinn Birds of Prey movie. Um, of course, here is a clip from um, her just reading from her memoir itself about her struggles going to college, raising a kid, and working. Being poor and living in poverty seemed to me a lot like probation, the crime being a lack of means to survive. For seven years, I scraped by as I worked my way through college in pursuit of a dream of being a published writer. But every time my car broke down or I lost a day of work, I felt incredibly guilty for pursuing education, especially an art degree. I felt like our life didn't afford me this notion of being a writer. It did not really seem to be of it either. The hours I spent in class or doing homework count toward my requirements. Well, I guess uh, I had a little technical problems there, so I'm going to um, see about relaunching that real quick. Oh, uh, I see what's wrong with it. Anyways, um, I will uh, kind of go from there. Um, uh, the show was picked, uh, pitched and picked up without a script, pilot, or cast attached to it, which is rare. Um, Stephanie uh, Lang said that she loves the idea of her memoir uh, could be an opener to all these other stories that can come out of it, much like Orange is the New Black introduced a white protagonist, which opened the doors for many other stories from non-white um, actresses and more. Uh, the clips uh, that I showed you right there, uh, I promise it'll run uh, correctly when it will be the uh, kind of like the uh, a strong closer for the Montana Book Festival programs that will be airing on MCAT. You can find out more information by going on to MCAT.org for all uh, scheduling and updates upcoming broadcasts of the Montana Book Festival. There's over 20 different programs. It's kind of crazy. All right, sports gambling. Hey, it's uh, kind of had a, a an, ish, an issue, a weird thing, especially with online gambling. And now uh, the Mon- state of Montana is looking to launch an app f- to help uh, kind of uh, curve some of the gambling, but also encourage some of the gambling as well. Um, this is to be associated with an official gambling location in Montana for it to be verified. So this app, you have to be, so think about this app as a leash to a casino. You have to be within a certain area, license and all that stuff, um, so your vet bets can be viable. Um, a lot of the bets are kind of like, uh, can be done through the app, but I think what they try to do is like, you have to collect the money through a lot of these key, uh, venues as well, much like the uh, Montana Lottery that is running this. Um, Brian uh, Con- uh, Costigan, security director for the Montana State Lottery, said Thursday at the commission meeting, the lottery received several comments that sports betting should be opened up for broader venues. Since most gambling is rolled up into liquor license, piggybacked onto those and just kind of regulated just in a casino. So you have Lucky Lills and all that all that jazz that's happening in the city as well. So you can do that kind of gambling. But they want to, but it is still unclear 
when sports betting will be available to the public because the lottery doesn't know how long the application process for vendors will take. They said once the rules are published on December 6th, when you that's when you'll start seeing some of the changes. I mean, most of the regulations say that, you know, you can't be a coach or a ref in a sporting event as well because um, since, you know, the refs and coaches have direct actions to those sports, they want to make sure that everything is on the up and up. Um, many of the uh, past gambling issues that have been have, you know, offshore gambling where you, uh, you, you, you uh, gamble – in another country so the people set up a server in another country so they can't get touched so they use that to trade money and do all that stuff so which was illegal and people went to jail for that so you gotta uh so instead of uh kind of denying any kind of online apping thing they're trying to regulate it a little bit better and try to str try to make it easier but at the same time still restrict a lot of the things that would make it hard especially when you're launching an app hey you, you, it's it's technology you know it's so easy for your uh, uh, information to get stolen as well um in national news uh one of the things that are going on is the impeachment hearings uh, of, of course right now they have so many hearings talking to so many people all that stuff but i'm gonna take a little side trip because the uh fifth yes the fifth uh democratic debate aired wednesday night on N nbc msnbc online and any other resource that everywhere you can find it and they were asked questions about trump impeachment ukrainian the uh you know your uh, how uh foreign policy is for a lot of people that are trying to do this as well um in uh, one moment, uh, Joe Biden said he, uh, former v Vice President Joe Biden said that he would keep fighting, uh, keep violent, keep fighting against violence um, of women by keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it, which got a really cringy response. With any debate, people are interested in knowing who won. Uh, Buttigieg um, was a favorite by many, but in regards to his race relations, he needs a bunch of, uh, the, he needs the non-white voter for many of the Dems to give him that final bump needed for uh, their presidential nomination. Uh, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker spoke on many points on building up the small business owner and giving people a chance to succeed. Um, Amy uh, Klobuchar, a Minnesota senator, spoke against Buttigieg uh, as a local official and a little green in the gills, so to speak, and had statewide support, and she had statewide support from her home state of Minnesota. Of course, I don't really too, talk too much about politics, but uh, the debate has been going on a lot, and it's uh, interesting to kind of see who's going to be taking on Trump or what's going to happen, because there's a, there's a lot of moving parts happening, but the Dems only know that they can... Uh, try to run for president and also, also try to impeach Trump. All right, so um, I got some new programs going to be airing on M on MCAT. Hopefully, I can get this to run without any um, buffering issues. So uh, without further ado, here are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And then when I come back, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some movies that are going to be coming out this weekend. We always say when the big elephants fight, those of us in the grass get stamp stomped on. And that's the fear that many people have in Hong Kong, that this competition between the U.S. and China will, of course, spill over into the Hong Kong issue, or the Hong Kong issue will somehow be used as some kind of leverage in the conflict between the Trump administration and Xi Jinping. And we also have to realize that uh, China has changed. China has become more authoritarian, more aggressive, more assertive. Uh, Xi Jinping has undone many of the policies that existed during the Deng Xiaoping era and that he's now declared himself leader for life. So we do have a very different set of circumstances, both in the framework and aspect of the Trump administration's China policy, such as it is, and the Xi Jinping approach to governing China and asserting China's role in Hong Kong and in the greater Asia Pacific region. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting to think about Iceland in particular, that 20 years ago, had very few visitors, and now it is such a popular place to go. And we are over, you know, it is overrun by tourism now. Um, and so, and you had talked about that a little bit, Matt, in one of the first talks you gave to the docents of, here you are landing in this place. And that's also this thing that goes along with the medium of photography, right? There's this stigma slash guilt that goes along with the medium because, I mean, everybody imagines, right, the view of Yellowstone and there's all the people standing. It used to be with tripods and cameras and now it's selfie sticks or phones, right? We, photographers are known to sort of inundate a beautiful place and take it over or uh, sully it a little bit. Um, and so you talked a little bit about being aware of that history and then what do you do with that?
Hey guys, do you want to build a snowman? Because I sure don't. Time for another Disney Kids movie sequel time blah blah blah. Let's build a snowman again because like the weather, we cannot stop this movie from happening. Welcome to the nightmare scape that is tiny girls flock into the movies to sing all the new songs that this movie will drop with a possible remix of the original Let It Go and then there's going to be a and then other things like that and many unbalanced songs that don't seem to fit but also fit and then there's other stories and things that happen. This movie will probably have these two girls, um, Anna and Elsa, Anna, as is pronounced, uh, going on a quest about their history since their whole thing is like magic. It's like, how did I get the magic and how did my sister not get magic? Let's find out. Things happen. Oh, wait, we have other people who have powers too. Let's find out what's their deal. It's like, how'd you get your powers? Oh, so this is how you got your powers. Let's team up. And I'm pretty sure Frozen 3 is going to be basically have like a, a villain who has superpowers just like them. And there's a basically kind of be like a, a Frozen 3 Civil War kind of movie. So that's what you can expect. Uh, these kind of movies, hey, this is probably exactly what it is. It's, you know, Frozen 2. Leaves, uh, Thanksgiving, cash grab. Um, up next, we got It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. If you want to feel good about being a good person, watch Mr. Rogers' A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which follows Fred Rogers' biopic played by... Um, um, Tom Hanks, I was about to say Hank Hill, uh, like any stories about a great figure, you bring a skeptic who turns their coat. It's like, wait a minute, I thought, but I didn't know, I'm a better person. Thank you. That's basically what this movie's about. It's like, from what you saw in the trailer, it's a guy who's just like, it's like, this guy, whatever. It's like, oh, hey, this guy might be actually genuinely cool. And then they get along and things happen. Won't You Be My Neighbor is a wonderful biopic which kind of goes over his whole life, con some of the controversies that happen towards the end of his life. Um, I'm going to talk too much about it. Uh, but this movie is mostly just uh, kind of like a, uh, a post-op piece about a, um, a journalist um, who kind of uh, meets up and uh, learns more about uh, Mr. Rogers. Um, yeah. Up uh, next, we got 21 Bridges. Uh, we move uh, all the children's movies. No, don't worry about children. This is the kind of the movies where your dads are going to go see because they don't want to feel good or they don't want to bring their daughters to their the movie just like, hey, you just go watch Frozen 2. I'm going to go see this movie. That's basically what this movie's purpose is for this particular thing. So uh, let me tell you about the story. The story is basically uh, you have um, criminals. Uh, who are ex-military, so they're really, really intense. So they end up closing down the 21 bridges in Manhattan, and it's like we gotta close the bridge. We gotta close the bridges. Which bridges? All of them. And then action movie, action movie. You gotta. The cop has to find uh, all the bad guys before it's too late. Um, there's firefights. Maybe the partner is two weeks from retirement gets killed. It's like oh, it's two weeks from retirement. Get these sons of. And then um, he has to fight, and then shoot, shoot, shoot. Bang, bang, bang. And basically, you can watch. Uh, you know this. Uh, but hey, you know it's a parent dad who want to see this movie while just up daughters and um, non-binary sons can watch the Disney Princess movie. So D 21 Bridges Escape from Frozen 2. That's what they should have named it. All right, <laughs> enough bashing movies. It's time to talk about some more movies and uh, this is called um, Sex Madness. Um, but don't worry, it's, it's not that scandalous. It's basically from the 1930s movies when sex didn't exist. So without further ado, here is Dub and Stuff featuring the 1938 Eight movie, Sex Madness. Hello, I would like to do another dub and stuff. Well, what do you mean it's overplayed? I need to do this for entertainment purposes. Okay, and this one's gonna be good. I promise. La 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 la, booty pop pop, hey 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 hey, boop poppy. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Mm oh yeah, let's do this. I'm trying to think of something to say. Well, that's good enough for me, baby. It's not that hard to think of words to say. Heck, I can tell you about my grease in my hair. It helps style it. Let me tell about styling hair. Wait a minute, didn't we talk about styling hair last movie? That was more about working out and stuff. All right, I'm done with this topic. I'll talk to you later. Mm-mm-mm. That ain't right. What's wrong with my baby? Just as I suspected. There's no baby in there. The only baby I see is the one inside your head. Oh, oh there must be something you can do. Please, Would you doctor. For the last time, I'm just a fancy boy. I am no doctor. I just have the stethoscope for fun. But my expert diagnosis is that if you want to have a baby, you have to have sex. No, no, there's no such thing as sex in the 30s. I know they seem to outlaw that back in the 20s, but seriously, 
Excuse me, son. Do you know anything about sex? Because you're going to have to do it if you're going to have a baby. See ya. Uh, I want grandchildren. Ow. Ow. Pat. Will, will you just let go of my arm? Jeez, stop it. Um, hello, you're not really letting go of my arm. Excuse me, son. Are you a doctor? Because if you look at this line, it means that you're going to live a long, prosperous life. Uh, do I sound like a quack to you? Well, not quite, but still, you shouldn't be grabbing people's arm without their consent. Well, what are we going to do here then? All they trained me to do was just touch people's upper arm and just, you know, just go with the flow or whatever. And you learned all this at Oxford? Boy, howdy. Medical science sure has made some leaps and bounds in the 1930s. Here, take my money. Man, I hope there's no epidemic coming up, because then I would have to give you even more money to help with the process. Oh yeah, me too. I swear if I read another story about how bad... Oh, great. Oh, syphilis this time? Okay, whatever. I guess I'll just throw... Let's have uh, Congress throw some money at this, and we'll make a movie. Nice. All right, now it's time for the middle of the show, in which I call the City Council Report. Every Friday, I kind of uh, watch some of the City Council meetings and kind of see what kinda, what's happening in the city of Missoula. Just kind of give you guys a little taste of what's happening in and around um, Missoula, you know, other projects and stuff like that. But I also wanted to uh, do a, a, a note uh, as well that I do apologize for... Um, um, my last Friday show, I, I used a lot of footage from uh, the week before, which was from November. Uh, from I didn't I had issues accessing the Wednesday meetings from the 13th, so I used the ones from the week before to uh, kind of have anything like that. So if there's any confusion with any approvals of anything moving on forward, I, I apologize for that. But for right now, um, I'm talking about some city council stuff, and there's a lot of things happening. The city of Missoula did move forward on many uh, changes, with which includes the approval of the $50,000 going towards the contribution to the winter shelter, emergency winter shelter at the Salvation Army. Um, another uh, big thing that happened as well is that Rattlesnake Dam um, shall be removed forward with approval for the dam removal since the... Uh, Acquisition of the Missoula Water Company, the Rattlesnake Dam, will, can can now be removed. But now they're looking for funding sources. If you read in the Missoulian, they're looking for you know trying to gather up some public public funds, trying to figure out how they're going to do this because they're working with Trout Unlimited and many other organizations along with the um, city of Missoula to help make this stream open and wide for um, ultimate more use and also to. Um, Encourage the flow of uh, bull trout through the rattlesnake as well, which goes into the Clark Fork River. All right. And also number three, one of the big things that's happening is that there were some rezoning and the 2020 uh, fiscal years, which also includes money from the Missoula's water company. Um, what, but I, what I wanted to talk about a little bit more is that uh, Hill, uh, Hillview Way project um, has a big impact on the Hillview Way. Um, the road is very tricky, so trying to build an apartment complex along that road, which was created just not so long ago to help um, improve the slope because there's a lot of issues with people sliding down the hill into the intersection. That's a little bit of history on there. But Teresa Jacobs, she's in Ward 5, and she's uh, worried about the townhouse development kind of uh, being too dense and also being um, kind of pushing uh, against the road as well. So this is what she had to say. We've seen a lot of each other over the last almost 11 months, 10 meetings. There's been a dozen or more of us who come to the meetings and that grow. That number is growing um, in part because of this petition. Um, it's been a really good experience to reach out to members of the, um, the closest circle around this development as well as a larger one and to find out a lot of them don't really know what's going on. Um, so um, I would like to read the introduction to the, the petition, what we ask people to sign. So um, there's a two part, this is part one. It says, this is a general appeal to the Missoula, Missoula City Council to vote against a conditional use request from developers to, to build 68 townhomes and parking for up to 319 vehicles on a very steep hillside above the Wapakia neighborhood. The only entry and exit to the development would be a long, steep, and narrow road off of Hillview Way, approximately one quarter mile long, 8% <clears throat> grade, and 21 feet wide with no turn lanes. So um, tonight I have, um, in addition to what we did the other day, for a total of 109 petitions so far, signed by 162 citizens. All right, so that was uh, that's kind of what's happening um, up there on the hillside. Uh, this is 
68 unit TED project has gone through a lot of steps. Um, one of the major things is that they wanted to do a soil geological survey trying to figure out, it's like, it's on a hill and they got to figure out if there's going to be any issues when they build on the hill that there's some support so the there's not much happening in terms of, you know, things happening. So there's been a lot of stop gaps of making this thing happen. But they also talked a little bit about this during the, um, I believe it was the um, land use and planning um, meeting as well. So you have the developer talking there as well, talking more about it a little bit more. I didn't capture that meeting as a whole, but I did talk a little, I am going to be talking a little bit from the land use and planning meeting in the future as well. All right, so moving on, um, one of the biggest things, and there's a big trend happening in the city of Missoula. A lot of people are concerned about the Nick Shakota City of Missoula partnership in building the new convention center that they want, that the city has been really pushing for. Um, they want to find a right developer and find the right, right resources to build a convention center, which will be run by the city of Missoula, but built by developers, which would be Nick Shakota. So Grant Miller has TIFFs and the MRA. Um, he's a, uh, he, this is during public comment. He is um, thinking that uh, this is what he had to say in response and how he feels about TIFFs and the MRA. In case some of you are thinking that our misguided statements here could be steered towards the light if we just educated ourselves and really understood how TIFFs work, I really need to be clear on something uh, because it's quite clear to me that this maybe is still being lost in translation. We don't need TIFF explained to us at all anymore. Some of us have been researching TIFF longer than some of you have been serving on city council. Some of us have been reporting on TIFF longer than some of you have been on council. We've read the theory, we've seen the charts, we understand the philosophy, we understand it. We also already acknowledge the good that these programs are capable of delivering. But honest research embraces both polarities and there seems to be a pathological aversion to even acknowledge the evidence-based fact that TIFFs aren't all they're cracked up to be. The truth is that the warnings and criticisms of TIFF are not coming from us, but some of the most highly esteemed academics in America today who sternly warn that the experiment you're currently running in Missoula with MRA right now has been run before and the cumulative results do not paint a picture of prosperity. Samuel Stein in particular, who some of you may be aware of, refers to tax increment financing as a geo-bribe. All right, so that's what um, um, one of the public comments uh, was talking a little bit more about this. Of course, you know, th uh, things have been kind of heating up the last couple of weeks, especially um, since uh, a lot of these folks who have been targeting Nick Shakota, um, saying that he's been using money to kind of uh, try to get money out of the city of Missoula for this as well. So this is uh, Staff Sergeant Brian Brandt, who is tired of the city of Missoula, appeasing the wealthy and ignoring the rest of Missoula, and um, things really heat up. And I will be speaking until I'm done. I was uh, thinking a lot about addressing the members of the council, but I also realized that the members of the council I do not need to address because the majority of you have betrayed our country and our community, and I want you to know this, and I want you to see it in my eye what I think about each and every one of you. My grandfather was a great man. He was a minister in this community, and no one that I know has picked up his mantle, and so I'm going to do what I believe that he would be doing right now, and he's gonna t I'm going to tell you a story. There was once a rich man who had 99 sheep, and a poor man who had one. And the rich man was going to have a, gift, a guest come over to his house, and he went out to his sheep, and he saw all of his sheep. But the poor man's one sheep was better than his, so he went and took the poor man's sheep and served it to his guest and left the poor man with nothing. Do you understand that story? You are that rich man! You're not going to yell in this chamber, sir, or you're not going to be able to participate in the meeting. You need to understand, mister. Sir, Point of what order. you have done, you, need to rant you have sold out this community. I'll adjourn the meeting and we'll... That's fine, okay. because you have wrecked... We will adjourn the meeting. ...the please. trust in this community. We're off until we can calm down. All right, so the meeting um, ended up uh, taking a short recess. Um, one of the people that have been speaking uh, against TIFFs as well came forward um, after uh, the recess and uh, said this. I've been coming with a group the last few weeks uh, to help make sure some things uh, we felt needed to be said could get said. 
I wanted to bring some of my own words tonight and thank you guys for listening uh, and responding. I've, I, I really appreciate that some of you guys really have been making an effort to correspond and, 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 and work together. And, and I think there's a lot. Uh, we, we, we've been going hard on this TIF thing because it's big and it's, it's pretty clearly upsetting some of us, you know. Um, and I think understandably. Um, but there's other things that, that we can agree on and work together on. And um, I hope that moving forward in the new session that you'll find in our group some ready, willing, and able partners. In All right. So that was kind of like I wanted to make sure that I have another person talk about that to kind of like reflect on what was said and how it was said. So a lot of times, you know, these meetings kind of heat up and a lot of people uh, have a tendency to uh, kind of thing. But the, there is a good uh, discussion that it has to be had as well because TIFFs is something that has been used as a tool for the city of Missoula to help diminish blight in the community. And one of the biggest things that the city of Missoula wants to do is have this convention center and they want to work with a developer and Nick Shakota was the one who did this as well. All right. So anyways, I don't want to talk a little more about this because it seems to be a growing hot topic in the city of Missoula. Um, uh, Rena Hansen reflects on the consent agenda item for rezoning in the Hellgate High School area for more units. So they're increasing density in the um, Hellgate um, High School, um, which she already has parking issues there. Uh, so here's uh, Rena Hansen talking a little bit more about that. Approving a vacation of 4th and Ronald will give the project approximately 16,000 additional square feet to their 31,000 purchased square feet. They increase the total, this will increase the total number of units by 35%. Vacation of any streets or right of way should provide public benefit. The public benefit in this proposal is sidewalks, curbs, gutters, and a path from 5th Street to 4th Street. There is already access off of 5th and Hilda to 4th and another access on Higgins Avenue. Adding an additional two access two blocks from either of these access points does not appear to benefit the community, but rather a convenience for the targeted empty nesters that are sought to occupy the proposed units. Curbs, sidewalks, and gutters are, are already constructed on the existing 4th Street. Public safety has not been addressed in this request. It is important to understand that the proposed vacation is on a single access street occupied hourly by Hellgate High School students, park users, and the overflow of downtown parking. Whether the zoning is approved or not, this vacation gives a developer and us additional property without much in exchange for public benefit. All right, so that was uh, their response for this rezoning as well. Um, the city plans to move uh, this to public hearing. I mean, like she spoke uh, against this, but this is a way to see to, uh, if they need to throw it back to committee. Public hearings aren't necessarily a, a streamlined to, for approval. A lot of times they have public hearings. They can have public um, comment like this. Uh, so she's a little bit early on the public comment on this. Uh, but it still had to be said. Um, there's a lot of things happening, and they're trying to fill in a lot of the gaps within the city of Missoula, infill, that kind of deal, working with what they have. And so that's part of uh, some of the processes, um, trying to figure out uh, space for the everything else, because just because you build houses doesn't mean you have a, a place for your vehicle or your uh, right of way to get the right of way. Uh, anyways, um, so one of the things, um, that's happening as well is that there's that, that development agreement on the uh, uh, Hellgate Meadows, which is the 57.5 acres off of Mullen Road. Um, this is Jordan Hess, and this is what he had to basically say in terms of like kind of what's happening and what the city has uh, uh, f uh, basically approved for the development in this area. Um, first of all, the development agreement that um, I've moved, uh, we approve here, um, is an innovative tool that the city can use to voluntarily get better development out of developers. This particular development agreement puts the sideboards on what can be built in the 57.5 acres um, that are being rezoned. Um, it uh, specifically uh, allocates density geographically where it makes sense within the parcel uh, and it creates transition zones so that there's not high density next to low density and um, there is a good transition of, of densities and housing types. It also addresses timing of infrastructure and other important development uh, pieces or, or other, other important uh, aspects of development. Um, 
And this is in an area where we are poised to grow um, and where uh, the city's involvement can create and shape responsible growth. Um, what we want to see in this area west of, of, um, of Reserve Street is orderly and predictable development um, that will uh, accommodate population growth for the next couple of decades in Missoula. And, and this is a good first step that will dovetail well with the build grant and other developments in the area. When Hellgate Meadows was first developed, it was a real innovative development. Um, it's a traditional neighborhood design with walkable streets and, um, and lots of density, lots of front porches. And, it, and out of that um, traditional neighborhood movement came a variety of iterations of development types over the last couple of decades. And the latest um, is the missing middle concept of housing, uh, which creates um, diverse housing choices that are available to a wide range of people in nice neighborhoods that are connected and walkable. And I think that what's proposed in the 57.5 acres will be a nice complement to what's on the ground and um, will fit in quite well. Again. All right. So that was uh, Jordan Hess talking a lot about details about what's happening with the uh, meadows as well. They're trying to match the aesthetic of England Boulevard. So if you go down at England Boulevard, you see some of that area. They're going to do what works with a single ha detached housing. Um, if they do have any attached stuff, they're going to try to keep it towards the uh, higher higher traffic areas. So there's not much um, issues, and then have like kind of like parking in the back for a lot of cars, so they don't have to like pull out into Mary Jane Boulevard, which is being developed with a 13 out of $20 million. Um, Myrta Becerra, she was concerned, uh, she voted against uh, this approval as well, uh, because she still said that there still needed to be more uh, research on this as well, but it had overwhelming board support for this. Um, Jesse Ramos reflects on affordable housing in Missoula and private property rights and how he is um, happy with how they're, do how they're doing with uh, um, Hellgate Meadows and the development in this area. From the beginning that we have a supply issue in Missoula. Uh, a lot of folks want to come here. It's beautiful, and right now the demand is outpacing the supply. And until we get that supply up, um, the the price is never going to go down. Until it starts to outpace that demand a little bit, or even catch up to it, um, it's just basic economics, and there's nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. And and again, I want to hit on the private property rights issue. Um, if anybody in the audience, um, if somebody was telling you guys what to do with your land, uh, believe me, I I would have something to say about that, and I consistently have when that's happened. So um, I think. That this has been thoughtful. I think that uh, the city is, is respecting private property rights while balancing the needs of the neighbors. And I think, uh, most importantly, we are addressing that critical piece that, that the community is facing, which is the affordable housing crisis. And, and um, I'm excited for this development. And, and again, I think it'll make a, an incredible dent. And I think it did so in a thoughtful way. So thank you. And I'm very supportive of the motions. All right. So uh, many of the things is that affordable housing is not just a crisis in Missoula. Um, it's a crisis all over the nation as well. Um, um, and Missoula is doing the best they can to help uh, work with that as well. Heather Harp reflects on development of charming neighborhoods, and she says that uh, she's, this is what she has to say about this particular process. Donna Gockler and a couple of, of her staff were um, talking with members of the Canyon Creek neighborhood on their Redfern Park. And uh, as oftentimes happens, you sit around a table and you're talking with neighbors and you find out, well, what do you like? What don't you like? But my question to them, to my table mates, was what do you like about Canyon Creek? And by and large, what they all said, it's kind of this really small street kind of ideal. There, and nobody has a front yard fence. I'm like, well, what's good about that? Well, it's kind of nifty because come Halloween time, we are inundated with tr trick-or-treaters because everyone just feels so welcome to come up to people's front doors. And, and I think what this project does in Hellgate Village, it, it's friendly to our trick-or-treaters. And if we can build neighborhoods that are friendly to kids, then I think we hit the mark. And All right, so that was uh, Heather Harp um, reflecting on this uh this new neighborhood that's going to be popping up in the city of Missoula. Um, uh, so, 
you know, the purpose was this to change the growth policy to reflect the development of the neighborhood based on the fr uh, the footwork done by de developers and the city to create a larger inclusive neighborhood, um, which sounds like an oxymoron, but you still get more England Boulevard type neighborhoods with large unit structures uh, towards busier streets. And as it goes further out into more of a suburban um, multi mixed commercial use, you know, a lot of big words and whatnot, um, you get the kind of like aesthetic neighborhood that you like from England Boulevard kind of general areas. There's a lot of big uh, apartment complexes, especially the, I think it's the 44 uh, apartments that are just off of uh, Mullen. They're going to try to keep them kind of in that general area as you're driving by Mullen Road, um, but they want to keep the neighborhoods a little more cozy um, versus the bigger, oh, sorry, I'm but they want to like that's kind of what their deal is is they want to figure out how to mix it all together without losing the uh the charm and um the um the neatness of neighborhoods all right all right so admin finance uh so linda mccarthy uh the missoula downtown partnership talks about bids hey there's a lot of uh, uh improvement districts there's a lot of money that can go into a lot of these districts this particular one has been going on for 20 years to help increase tourism uh diminish some of the blights while at the same time uh, fixing um, ideals and just kind of having a lot of uh, um, businesses downtown contribute by having a kind of like a uh, a soft tourism tax. And by soft tourism tax, I mean like they're going to tack on five, ten dollars per room if you rent in the downtown hotel, motel kind of deal. And these are just and it's all voluntary. I mean, most of the hotels actually do a lot of businesses use the money to help. Uh, put this aside for the city of Missoula to help improve tourism, advertising tourism, wayfinding, and all that stuff. So Linda McCarthy, um, they talk about some of the uh, things that could happen if they just decided to not renew this, which is, um, this is exactly what she said. You wouldn't have um, seven-day-a-week garbage and recycling removal. You wouldn't have alley plowing in Zone 1. Um, you wouldn't have any of the economic development or planning processes that we've, um, you know, taken on in, in the private sector. You wouldn't have the policing, the clean team. You wouldn't have um, some of the, the things that we've invested in, like wayfinding or um, holiday decorations. Those are some of the things that um, we do as well. So um, some of that would fall back on the shoulders of the city to do. Um, you know, prior to the creation of the BID, the city, city did garbage um, removal from the street cans, and they did 22 cans three days a week. Um, so, so you know, our property values would potentially decline. Our our clean and safe programming goes away, so downtown would not be as vibrant as it is today. Um, All right, so that was Linda McCarthy talking a little bit more about this. Of course, they go into further detail about BIDs in the presentation, but I just wanted to say uh, some of the uh, the sky is falling um, situation that would happen if they decided not to do the BIDs. Uh, but have been used as a way for hotels to add the five dollar ten dollar price, like I mentioned before. Uh, this was created to improve the downtown areas for encouraging places to go. A public hearing uh, was put in place for people and business businesses to voice any concerns that they have because there has been some concerns about certain people who don't like the BID is because they run smaller uh, motels in the city of Missoula and they feel, fear as though that ha raising the rates on um, a lot of the uh, other bigger hotels that have um, uh, um, would also not trickle down to a lot of the smaller ho hotels that people usually prefer when they don't want to go to the bigger hotels or if they're overbooked. So that was one of the comments that I remember uh, them mentioning a while back ago when they're talking about BIDs, but this is all about renewal and they plan on doing this on December 16th. So there's a lot of public hearings that are happening on December 16th and in public works, um, they're working on uh, raising the utility rates um, for your stormwater. So stormwater, there's a lot of infrastructure things that are happening as well and they want to increase it to help um, increase the infrastructure for stormwater and stormwater is a district in the city of Missoula that um, deals with any kind of uh, rain runoff that comes and so they try to figure out how to way to uh, collect the rain in, in places where it doesn't um, um, I guess uh, uh, it's basically uh, uh, insurance to make sure that the aquifer isn't uh, get uh, tainted and that's what the stormwater is a lot of times used for. Um, of course, I didn't watch this whole meeting. They want to fix a couple issues that they come up in terms of working with protecting the aquifer and making sure water comes from urban areas are clean and clear for people downtown and those who are affected by city stormwater. 
Infrastructure improvements, uh, rainy day fund, ha, because you know, storm water. Okay, moving on. Land use and planning. Um, one of the biggest things that they're uh, talking about is the, uh, the zoning and the requirements to the extreme weather uh, shelter. They passed the money to be put in place to give the money for uh, the extreme weather shelter for homeless folks who um, have to be uh, in a place overnight, but they're working. Uh, they're worried about capacity because the Paul Rail Center, they have a lot of issues when, in terms of capacity as well. And it's something that they're worried, they're worried about in terms of liability because a lot of times if you have too many people that break the capacity load in most places, it's a fire hazard and a lot of times they have to uh, clear some people out because of that. Jen Gross, uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Of course, for many years, there have been difficult uh, difficulties working with individuals since the Pavarel sent a win to a person be person to person behaviors. Because if there's a fight that breaks out, the person who started the fight and the person in the fight are both kicked out of the Pavarel Center. So they're working on assessing this for uh, homeless folks and uh, with hotel vouchers also not really working out as much as they would hope would have worked out. Um, Aaron Pian, Office of Housing and Community Development, looks into a permanent navigation center moving forward with this. And then I have this one quote, and that's it, and they'll talk a little bit more will continue to play an active role in the annual planning for emergency winter shelter. Additionally, we anticipate serving as that first point of contact for religious organizations that are interested in providing the service in the city of Missoula. So per the requirements that are outlined in code, which Jen will talk more about today, our office will uh, work with emergency, or I'm sorry, work with religious assemblies to make sure that they meet the, or the criteria that's outlined and will encourage them as well to work with us on the development of a management plan. We'll also make referrals or formally connect those religious assemblies with the city's building inspection division and the city's fire marshal to make sure that they're in compliance and receive the appropriate inspections um, to address code issues in those areas. All right, so one of the biggest things is uh, from this, the future plan is the construction of the navigation slash permanent extreme weather shelter. Um, this is not going to be done for couple years now, but for right now, the Salvation Army has graciously opened their doors for extreme weather um, shelter for a lot of folks. Still, it's a uh, capacity, always been a capacity issue as well, is that the Pavarel Center, uh, now that they learned from a lot of um, things that happened in the past, not to mention they had some flooding issues over the summer, in which really helped them solidify some of their connection with the Salvation Army, they were able to um, really work on a more of a proactive plan with uh, working with homeless folks that need a, a temporary uh, extreme weather condition shelter. Uh, one of the things I do want to leave off on is uh, that this me went over a lot of different things, but the main point that they wanted to drive home was to have an intermittent um, Intermittent, intermittentary. Uh, I can't look at the word because I, I, I always uh, inter, intermittentary uh, operating shelter provided by religious assembly uses for homeless and at-risk populations during weather events where human life is at risk. That's the main point. So I wanted to provide this as well. And that ends my city council report and committee reports for you guys as well. I have a video. I have a bunch of new art clips for you guys. But also I wanted to kind of uh, say farewell to the clay studio. Of of Missoula because um, they're going to be uh, not, not not the clay studio but the exhibit that's in the clay studio say farewell to it because you only guys get one more day to check this out
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about events that are happening within the city of Missoula. Kicking things off, hey, it's going to cold out this weekend as well, so enjoy some indoor fun at the Flying Squirrel Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Acro Sports Center. These are wonderful inside family fun time because a lot of times winter time is a good excuse to kind of stay indoors and get nice and chunky um but especially during uh, the thanksgiving holiday which is happening pretty soon so you might want to double check that um tiny tales and story time at the musical public library so once you're done working out your bodies you can around 10 30 a.m you can guys can work out your brains and get your kids exposed to books at the musical public library at tiny tales and story time yarns is happening at the musical public library uh calling for all knitters and crocheters bring your lunch and your latest project to the boardroom fridays at noon and um it's your end of the week some crafty fun and you know uh christmas is happening so it's a good way for you guys to make a sweater well, sweaters take forever but you might as well just make a scarf and just just make it easy on yourself watercolor uh painting is also happening in the Music public library you can call uh, rob p uh, which will help you understand and develop the skills and techniques necessary to enjoy and succeed at watercolor painting and this class is open to adults 18 and over um, participants should bring their own watercolor paper paints brushes and uh uh, pallets. Uh, oof. For questions, you can call Robert at uh, 258 3867 and leave a message. Or uh, once again, the number is 258 3867 at the Musical Public Library, Robert. Um, and it happens from 12 to uh, 12 to 2 every Friday. Students visiting Montag. Hey, this is a kind of a kind of a big thing that's happening. And Montag is a uh, tech future if you're all interested in all the robotics techs all the uh, enterprises and all that stuff looking into montec is the place to go and they're celebrating 30 days of innovation montec is welcoming the community to and students to a networking q a at the montana technology enterprise center there'll be uh having the green bus pick you up at the uh, music building outside of uh, the university campus and they'll be driving to montec which is by, by just past behind the Thunderbird Motel, a little bit further up um, the East Missoula Way, if you're going past the uh, Albertsons, so uh, down Broadway. Um, so basically, uh, it's a technology-focused uh, business incubator that is building a community on high-growth enterprises on the Clark Fork River by connecting people and linking them with the support services to help them get their venture on the right track. And this will, you know, and this will be happening starting um, at noon. Uh, teen Writers Group, um, starting at 3.30, this is a, a great opportunity for teens to improve their writing, get into writing, uh, express themselves through writing, and maybe have a little chocolate as well. And they're going to be at the uh, youth um, youth area, the youth, young, um, young adult um, area, so you guys can check that out as well. The Popovix. It's the 2019 Montana premiere project. Popovix is a uh, original show by Dr. Randy Bolton's playwriting class in 2013. It is a dark drama comedy that explores mortality. Produced by the Downtown Dynamics Collective and the Montana Playwright Network. This is happening um, this weekend and next week. Um, um, and from th Wait, wait, hold on a second. Let me just double check the date. Um, yeah, so the last showing is happening tonight, but it's also going to have a last showing on Saturday um, at 7.30 p.m. the Downtown Dance Collective. It's your last chance to check it out, an original show. Um, there's the Ultimate Craft Fair starting on Saturday. Um, kicking things off on Saturday is the Ultimate Craft Fair at the University of Montana UC Third Ballroom starting at 9 a.m. It goes until about 1, 2 o'clock. Um, you can get your head start on your holiday shopping at the largest craft sale in Western Montana. Hands-on Science, Motion Mania, Spectrum Science Discovery Center, open all week long. Saturdays is a little bit earlier for your Saturday drop-in type deal, and you can, while well, they explore physics and motion at the Discovery Bench, um, it's crazy. Uh, and also, speaking of kids, if you're interested in bringing your kids and dropping them off here at MCAT, MCAT hosts a Saturday drop-in from 1 to 5 p.m. <coughs> Generally, from 1 to 3, kids work on a project, and if... Um, and uh, they have expert staff working with some of the kids, help their edit. Uh, so they shoot their stop animation. They add some voices, add some music, add some sound effects, some kooky stuff, and bring their inanimate objects to life. Um, a lot of kids like bringing in a lot of their own Legos and stuff, but we also have Legos here as well. We have a little bit of clay, but we usually wait for the kids who show a little um, more initiative with the clay making as well for them to move forward on that as well. So we, we want to get them started with Legos. Well, we want to see how they go from there. And uh, we also have some live action videos for a lot of kids who like doing some movie making as well. So 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday, $10 per kid, $15 for siblings. You can't, you can't, you can't, um, I can't think. I'm uh, moving on. Um, there's the, um, uh, 
municipal mushrooms. Uh, join. Uh, so that's happening at the Green Path Herb School. This is at 180 South 3rd Street. It's upstairs. Um, Melissa Purnell is a um, overview of folk and scientific information on medical mushrooms. Um, municipal, so municipal mushrooms. She'll focus on turkey tail, um, uh, biochemical mechanisms of um, me, um, mushroom healing properties. Uh, cultivating techniques. Um, they will spawn uh, hunting tips and medicine making techniques, um, and it's $35. Um, Zach Comedy so Showcase. Zach is hosting a lot of things. Um, a lot of uh, places are moving in, and the, uh, also it's pretty cool that the Big Side Documentary Film Festival will be moving to the Zootown Arts Community Center that just got their new location and have been doing a lot of great things. But they're doing a comedy showcase. This is Kicking things off at 7 p.m. It's $5 of tickets. Um, you got Tim Miller, Sarah Ashwell, Amy Carroll, Lenny Peppers, uh, Nathan St. Ong, um, and Eden Solace will be uh, stand-up comedy in, 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 uh, all, all weekend long as well. And if you're interested in uh, National Novel Writing Month, write in. Which the Public Library is uh, doing a final week of Nano Remo. You don't need to know how to come... To any prior write in to attend. Uh, come write a novel, bring your yellow legal patent pen or computer or whatever you prefer, and write in the company of other determined authors who have pledged to write 50,000 words this month. Access to uh, electricity and cookies will be provided for free. All authors welcome. The big meeting room on the lower floor of Music Public Library starting at 2 30 on Sunday. And then, of course, there's the Dolce Artist Bazaar. At Dolce, they will take an art of fine food and beautiful wine very seriously, where they, but we revere nothing more passionately than people. They are constantly inspired by things our workers and customers create and love, so we've decided to celebrate those treasures. And join us for the third annual artist celebration at Dolce Art uh, Bazaar on Sunday, November 24th, from 5 to 8 p.m. They will herald an incredible gift from the human spirit and timeless perfections of the eclectic artist community. And it'll be, yes, at Cafe Dolce off of uh, Broadway. No, not Broadway. Brooks. Still the B. Close enough. All right, so those are your, some of your events that are happening as well this weekend. I'm about out of time. But I did want to show you guys another art clip before I wrapped up because this art clip will be wrapping up by the end of November. So you still have another week or so to check this art clip out. And then when I return, I'm going to be wrapping up the show. Hey guys, welcome back. Let me tell you a little bit more about um, where you can find more information about what's happening in the city of Missoula. You know, MissoulaEvents.net is a great resource for anybody. A lot of organizations and nonprofits use this as a resource to get their name out there, um, try to get people to check out all what's happening in and around the city of Missoula. It'd be like, hey, what's going on in the city of Missoula? Go to MissoulaEvents.net. Uh, it's more than just about uh, late night events if you're looking for that part. Hey, um, yeah, I'm really cool. All right, so anyways, uh, let's talk a little about where you can find more information on MCAT, you can give us a call. Um, we're uh, through our website at MCAT.org. Our number is 213-9478. Yes, we changed our number. 213-9478. By calling that number, you get better access to uh, getting a great response because we uh, go through a third uh, military, uh, military uh, 
middleman that is able to record your message in the written word, but also be able to find you and get back to you um, as soon as possible. So it's a, it is a great resource as well. All right. So um, I think that about does it. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning as well. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Mm-hmm.